In the last video lecture, we covered cells of the immune system. Cells of the immune system which are widely dispersed in our body. Some are circulating in blood, some are circulating in lymph, and some are resident in various tissues and organs. When these cells recognize a foreign invader, they interact with each other and work together to destroy or eliminate the pathogen. Now, the question here is, how the communication among immune cells takes place. The communication within the immune system is mediated by small soluble molecules which are known as cytokines. Cytokines are produced and secreted by a wide variety of cells. They act as intercellular mediators. Once released, these cytokines bind to specific receptors on the surface of other cells of the immune system. And these specific receptors are known as cytokine receptors. Once a released cytokine binds to the cytokine receptor, it generates an internal signal. And this signal alters the activity of the cell. As a result, a cell may prepare to divide. It can undergo growth and differentiation or it can secrete it, its own cytokines. Let us now talk about some important properties of cytokines. Cytokines are hormone-like substances. That means they are signaling molecules. Cytokines are soluble molecules. And some of them are membrane-bound molecules. Chemically, they can be protein or glycoprotein their molecular mass is less than 30 kilodaltons. Cytokines have short half-life. This also explains that mostly cytokines act over a short distance. That is, either signaling is autocrine or paracrine. By autocrine we mean cytokine acts on the same cell. And paracrine means cytokine acts on the nearby cells. Cytokines are effective at low concentrations. This is because of the specific high affinity cytokine receptors. This means cytokine receptors are sensitive to low concentrations of the cytokines. The important cytokines which are involved in signaling between cells of the immune system are interleukins, tumor necrosis factor, interferons, colony stimulating factors and chemokines. Interleukins, abbreviated as IL. In Latin, inter means between and in Greek, leukos means white. So, literally, they are the cytokines produced by one leukocyte acting on the another leukocyte. But cells other than leukocyte may also use interleukins. Till now, about 35 interleukins have been identified. They are named interleukin. IL followed by a number which represents sequence in which they were discovered. For example, T cell secretes interleukin 2. Interleukin 2 binds to the cytokine receptor present on the same T cell. This is an example of autocrine signaling. Interleukin 2 results in growth and activation of T cells. T cells also secrete interleukin 4. Interleukin 4 binds to the cytokine receptor present on the B cell. And then interleukin 4 results in differentiation of B cells into plasma cells. Tumor necrosis factors, abbreviated as TNF. Tumor necrosis factors are produced by mast cells, macrophages and T-cells. They are often firmly anchored into the cell membrane. So, tumor necrosis factors are those cytokines which are membrane bound. They regulate immune responses and inflammation. They are responsible for apoptosis of many cell types. For example, macrophages release tumor necrosis factor alpha. Tumor necrosis factor alpha binds to the 
cytokine receptor present on the neutrophil and result in activation of neutrophils. Interferons, abbreviated as IFN. Interferons are so named because of their ability to interfere with the viral application. They are of two types, type 1 interferons which comprises of interferon alpha and interferon beta. These are produced in response to viral injections. Type 2 interferons comprises of interferon gamma which increases phagocytosis by macrophages. Let us see how interferons provide antiviral defense. When a virus infects a cell, it induces the infected cell to produce interferons. These interferons are released by this cell and they bind to nearby uninfected cells. Uninfected cells now produce antiviral proteins. When the virus comes to infect this uninfected cell, the antiviral proteins of the cell degrade viral nucleic acid and inhibit protein synthesis. Thus, interferon prevents spread of viral infections. Colony Stimulating Factors, abbreviated as CSF. Colony stimulating factors are essential for the growth and differentiation of immature leukocytes in the bone marrow. That is, dead blood cells, monocytes, granulocytes and lymphocytes. Colony stimulating factors ensure that the body is supplied with sufficient white blood cells of all types. Thus, the supply will determine the immunity of our body. Let us look at the important colony stimulating factors. MCSF, monocyte colony stimulating factor. MCSF is produced by T cells and bone marrow and they affect the growth of cells of the monocyte lineage. GMCSF, granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. GMCSF are produced by T cells and macrophages and they help in growth and differentiation of dendritic cells. GCSF, granulocyte colony stimulating factors. They are produced by monocytes and they help in differentiation and development of neutrophils. Chemokines. Chemokines acts as chemoattractants and they signal leukocytes to move. Thus, chemokines control the movement of leukocytes. For example, when there is an infection, the chemokines secreted at the site of infection signal the leukocytes present in the blood such as neutrophil to migrate at the site of infection. In such cases, neutrophil become the principal phagocytic cells at the site of infection. So, now we understand that communication within the immune system is mediated by cytokines.